Hello, this is Dad Can in Japan. I am reading the fourth book in the temporarily titled Magic Treehouse series, Pirates Past Noon, by Mary Pope Osborne. So if you're sitting comfortably, let's begin. Chapter 1. Too Late Jack stared out his bedroom window. The rain kept falling and falling. The TV said it would stop by noon, said Annie, his seven-year-old sister. It's already past noon, said Jack. But we have to go to the treehouse, said Annie. I have a feeling that M person will be there today. Jack pushed his glasses into place and took a deep breath. He wasn't sure he was ready to meet the M person yet. The mysterious person who had put all the books in the magic treehouse. Come on, said Annie. Jack sighed. OK, he said. You get our raincoats and boots. I'll get the medallion and bookmark. Annie ran to get their rain gear. Jack reached into his drawer. He took out the medallion. It was gold. The letter M was engraved on it. Then he took out the bookmark. It was made of blue leather. It had the same M on it. Both M's matched the M that was on the floor of the treehouse. Jack put the medallion and the bookmark into his backpack. Then he threw in his notebook and pencil. Jack liked to take notes about important things. I got our rain stuff, called Annie. Jack picked up his pack and went downstairs. Annie was waiting by the back door. She was putting on her boots. Meet you outside, she said. Jack pulled on his raincoat and boots. Then he put on his backpack and joined her. The wind was blowing hard. Ready, set, go, shouted Annie. They kept their heads down and charged into the rainy wind. Soon they were in the Frog Creek woods. Tree branches swayed, flinging rainwater everywhere. Yuck, said Annie. They splashed through puddles until they came to the tallest oak tree in the woods. They looked up. Tucked between two branches was the treehouse. It looked dark and lonely against the stormy sky. Hanging from the treehouse was a rope ladder. It was blowing in the wind. Jack thought of all the books up there. He hoped they weren't getting wet. The M person's been there, said Annie. Jack caught his breath. How can you tell, he said. I can feel it, she whispered. She grabbed the rope ladder and started up. Jack followed. Inside the treehouse it was chilly and damp, but the books were dry. They were all neatly stacked along the wall, just the way they had been the day before. Annie picked up a castle book on top of one stack. It had taken them to the time of castles. Remember the knight, she said. Jack nodded. He would never forget the knight who had helped them. Annie put down the castle book. She picked up the next book on the stack. It was the dinosaur book that had taken them to the time of dinosaurs. Remember, she said. Jack nodded. He'd never forget the Tyrannodon who had saved him from the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Then Annie held up a book about ancient Egypt. Meow, she said. Jack smiled. The Egypt book had taken them to the time of pyramids. A black cat had come to rescue them. And here's the book about home, Annie said. She held up the book with a picture of their hometown in it. Frog Creek, Pennsylvania. Jack smiled again. The Pennsylvania book had brought them back home at the end of each of their adventures. Jack sighed. OK, he still had two main questions. Who was the M person who had put all the books here? And did the knight, the pteranodon and the cat all know the M person? Finally, Jack reached into his backpack. He took out the gold medallion and the leather bookmark. He placed them on the floor, right over the spot where the M glowed faintly in the wood. Rain blew into the treehouse. Brrr, said Annie. It's not very cosy today. Jack agreed with her. It was too wet and cold. Look, Annie pointed to an open book lying in the corner. I don't remember a book being open. Me neither, said Jack. Annie picked up the book. She stared at the picture on the page. Wow, this place looks great. She showed the picture to Jack. He saw a sunny beach a big green parrot sitting in a palm tree, and a ship sailing on a blue sea. Another gust of rainy wind blew into the treehouse. Annie pointed to the picture. 
I wish we were there instead of here, she said. Yes, yeah, said Jack, but where is there? Too late, came a squawk. Jack and Annie turned quickly. Sitting on a branch outside the window ledge of the treehouse was a green parrot, exactly like the parrot in the picture. Too late, the parrot squawked again. A talking parrot, said Annie. Is your name Polly? Can I call you Polly? Suddenly the wind began to whistle. Oh no, now we're in big trouble, said Jack. The wind blew harder. The leaves shook. The treehouse started to spin faster and faster. Jack squeezed his eyes shut. Then everything was still, absolutely still. Jack opened his eyes. Too late, squawked Polly. Chapter 2 The Bright Blue Sea Jack felt hot sunlight streaming into the treehouse. He smelled salt water. He heard the sound of waves. He and Annie looked out the window. The treehouse was in a palm tree. Beyond was a bright blue sea. A tall sailing ship was on the horizon. It was just like the picture in the book. Too late, squawked Polly. Look, said Annie. Polly was flying in circles above the treehouse. Then she swooped down to the ocean. Come on, let's follow her. Let's go in the water, said Annie. She took off her raincoat and dropped it on the floor. Wait, we have to study the book first, said Jack. He started to reach for the book, but Annie grabbed it. You can read it on the beach, she said. Without even looking at the cover, she shoved the book into Jack's backpack. He sighed. Actually, the water did look wonderful. OK, Jack said. He took off his raincoat too. Come on. Annie handed Jack his backpack, then started down the ladder. Jack folded the raincoat and put it next to the stack of books. He put on his backpack, then he went down the ladder. As soon as Annie hit the sand, she ran toward the ocean. Jack watched her wade into the water. She was still wearing her rain boots. Your boots, Annie, called Jack. She shrugged. They'll dry out, she said. Jack took off his boots and socks. He put them beside his pack. Then he rolled up his jeans and ran across the hot sand into the waves. The water was warm and clear. Jack could see shells and tiny fishes. He shielded his eyes against the sun and peered out at the sea. The tall sailing ship seemed a bit closer. Where's Polly? said Annie. Jack glanced around. No sign of Polly. Not in the palm trees, not on the sunlit sand, not over the bright blue sea. When Jack looked out to the sea again, the ship seemed even closer. Now Jack could see its flag. As he stared at the ship's flag, a chill went through him. The flag was black, with a skull and crossbones. Oh, man, he breathed. He started out of the water. What's wrong? said Annie. She splashed after him. Jack ran to his backpack. Annie followed. He grabbed the book from his backpack. He looked at the cover. For the first time, he and Annie read the title of the book. Yikes, said Annie. Pirates of the Caribbean, Jack read aloud. Chapter 3. Three Men in a Boat We've come to the time of pirates, Jack said. Pirates, squeaked Annie. Like in Peter Pan? Jack flipped to the picture that showed the parrot, the sea and the ship. He read the caption under the picture. Three hundred years ago, pirates raided Spanish treasure ships in the Caribbean Sea. He grabbed his notebook and pencil from his pack and wrote, Pirates in the Caribbean. He turned to the next page. There was a picture of a pirate flag. He read, The skull and crossbones flag was called the Jolly Roger. Let's go, said Annie. Wait, said Jack. I want to make a drawing of the flag. He propped the pirate book in the sand. He started drawing the Jolly Roger flag. Don't copy the picture in the book, said Annie. Look at the real thing. But Jack pushed his glasses into place and kept drawing. Jack, some pirates are getting into a rowboat, said Annie. Jack kept drawing. Jack, the boat's leaving the big ship, said Annie. What? Jack looked up. Look, Annie pointed. Jack looked. He saw the rowboat coming toward the shore. Run, said Annie. She started running toward the treehouse. Jack jumped up. His glasses fell off. Hurry, Annie called back to him. Jack went down on his knees. He felt for his glasses. Where were they? Jack saw something glinting in the sand. He reached for it. It was his glasses. He snatched them up. 
Then he threw his notebook and pencil into his pack. He put the pack on his back. He grabbed his boots and his socks, and he took off running. Hurry, they're coming! And he was at the top of the rope ladder. Jack looked back at the sea. The pirates were closer to the shore. Suddenly Jack saw the pirate book. In all the confusion he had forgotten it. It was still propped in the sand. Oh man, I forgot the book, he said. He dropped his socks and boots below the treehouse. Come on, Jack, and he shouted. I'll be right back, Jack called. I've got to get the book. Jack, forget it. But Jack was already running toward the water. Jack grabbed the book. Come back, and he shouted. Jack shoved the book into his backpack. Suddenly a giant wave carried the rowboat right onto the beach. Run, Jack, shouted Annie. Three big pirates splashed onto the sand. They had knives in their teeth. They had pistols in their belt. They charged toward Jack. Run, Jack, run, cried Annie. Chapter 4 Vile Booty Jack started to run across the hot sand. He ran as fast as he could, but the pirates ran faster. Before Jack knew it, the biggest pirate had grabbed him. Jack struggled, but the pirate had huge, strong arms. He held on to Jack and laughed a mean, ugly laugh. He had a shaggy black beard. A patch covered one eye. Jack heard Annie yelling. He saw her coming down the rope ladder. Stay where you are, Jack shouted. But Annie kept coming. Leave him alone, you bully, she cried. The other two pirates laughed meanly. They were dirty and ragged. Annie charged up to the biggest pirate. Let him go, she said. She hit the pirate with her fist and kicked him. But the pirate just growled. Then he grabbed her too, and with his giant hands he held Jack and Annie as if they were two kittens. No one escapes Captain Bones, he roared. His breath was terrible. Let go, Annie shouted into his face. But Captain Bones just smiled. All his teeth were black. Annie felt silent. Captain Bones laughed loudly. Then he turned to the other two. Find out what's in their house, you dogs, he said. Aye, aye, Captain, they answered. And they started up the ladder to the treehouse. What do you spy, Pinky? shouted Captain Bones. Books, Captain, Pinky shouted down. Arr, books, growled Captain Bones. He spit on the sand. I want gold, you dogs. Dogs are nicer than you, said Annie. Shh, said Jack. What about you, Stinky? Captain Bones roared. Just books, Captain, shouted Stinky. Arr, books, said Captain Bones. He spit on the sand again. I hate books. Keep looking, dogs. Find me something good. Captain Bones grabbed Jack's backpack. What's in here? he said. Nothing. Jack quickly opened the pack. Just paper, a pencil, a book. Another book, roared Captain Bones. That's vile booty. A gleeful shriek pierced the air. Captain Bones froze. What's that? he shouted. Look, Captain, look. Pinky leaned out the treehouse window. He held the medallion. It glimmered in the sunlight. Oh, brother, thought Jack. Throw it down, cried Captain Bones. It's not yours, shouted Annie. Captain Bones dropped Jack and Annie. He caught the medallion as it fell. Gold, 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 he cried. Captain Jack threw back his head and laughed horribly. He grabbed two of his pistols. He shot them in the air. Pinky and Stinky howled like wolves. Chapter 5 The Kid's Treasure Jack and Annie watched in horror. The gold greedy pirates seemed to have lost their minds. Jack nudged Annie. Together they started to back slowly away from the pirates toward the treehouse. Halt! Captain Bone shouted. He aimed his pistols at them. Not another step, lubbers! Jack and Annie froze. Captain Bones grinned his black toothed grin. Tell our bones where the rest is, he growled. Or prepare to meet thy doom. W what rest? said Annie. The rest of the treasure, roared Captain Bones. I know it's on this island. I have a map. He reached into a belt pouch and pulled out a torn piece of paper. He waved it at Jack and Annie. Is that a treasure map? asked Jack. Aye, it's the map telling about kids' treasure. Which kids' treasure? Not us kids, said Annie. We don't know anything about a kids' treasure. 
Why don't you read the map? said Jack. You read it! Captain Bone shoved the map in Jack's face. Jack stared at the strange marks on the paper. What does that mean? asked Jack. What does what mean? asked Captain Bones. Those words. Jack pointed at the words at the bottom of the map. Well, it means... Uh, Captain Bones' good eyes squinted at the writing. He frowned. He coughed. He rubbed his nose. Ah, leave him alone, Pinky growled at Jack. You know he can't read, said Stinky. Shut up, Captain Bones roared at his men. Jack and I can read, Annie piped up. Shh, said Jack. Come, make him read the map, said Stinky. Captain Bones gave Jack and Annie a dark look. Read it, he growled. Then you'll let us go, said Jack. The pirate squinted his good eye. I love her. When the treasure's in me hands, I'll let you go. Okay, said Jack, I'll read it to you. He looked at the map. It says, The gold doth lie beneath the whale's eye. Eh? Captain Bones scowled. Was that supposed to mean lubber? Jack shrugged. Hang it! Take him back to the ship, shouted Captain Bones. They can rot there till they're ready to tell us how to find kid's treasure. Jack and Annie were tossed into the rowboat. Waves splashed the sides. The sky ahead was dark with thunderclouds. A strong wind had started to blow. Row, dogs, row, said Captain Bones. Pinky and Stinky began rowing toward the big ship. Look, Annie said to Jack. She pointed to the shore. Polly the parrot was flying over the sand. She wants to help us, whispered Annie. Polly started to fly out over the waves, but the winds were too strong. She turned around and flew back to the island. Chapter 6 The Whale's Eye the rowboat tossed from side to side. The waves were huge. Salty spray stung Jack's eyes. He felt seasick. Hold her steady, shouted Captain Bones. He pointed at the sea. All will be meat for those evil brutes. Dark fins cut through the water. Sharks! One zoomed right by the boat. Jack could have reached out and touched it. He shuddered. Soon the rowboat pulled alongside the ship. The air was filled with wild fiddle music and bagpipes playing, and Jack heard jeers, shouts, and ugly laughter. Hoist him aboard, Captain Bone shouted to his men. Annie and Jack were hauled onto the deck. The ship creaked and moaned. It rolled from side to side. Ropes flapped and snapped in the wild wind. Everywhere they looked, Jack and Annie saw pirates. Some were dancing, some were drinking, many were fighting with swords. Or with their fists. Lock em in my cabin, Captain Bones ordered. A couple of pirates grabbed Jack and Annie and threw them in the ship's cabin, then locked the door. The air inside the cabin was damp and sour smelling. A shaft of grey light came through a small round window. Oh man, said Jack, we've got to figure out how to get back to the island. So we can get into the treehouse and go home, said Annie. Right. Jack suddenly felt tired. How would they ever get out of this mess? We'd better examine the book, he said. He reached into his pack and pulled out the pirate book. He flipped through the pages. He looked for information to help them. Look, he said. He found a picture of pirates burying a treasure chest. This might help. Together they read the words under the picture. Captain Kidd was a famous pirate. It is said that he buried a treasure chest on a deserted island. The chest was filled with gold and jewels. Captain Kidd, said Jack. So that's the kid that Bones keeps talking about, said Annie. Right, said Jack. Annie looked out the round window. And Captain Kidd's treasure is buried somewhere on the island, she said. Jack took out his notebook and pencil. He wrote, Captain Kidd's treasure on island. Jack, Annie said. Shh, wait a minute, he said. I'm thinking. Guess what I see, said Annie. What? Jack asked. He looked back at the book. A whale! Neat, he said. Then he looked up. A whale? Did you say a whale? A whale! A huge whale, as big as a football field! Jack jumped up and looked out the window with her. Where? Jack asked. All he could see was the island, and stormy waves, and shark fins. There, said Annie. Where? Where? There, the island, is shaped like a giant whale. 
Oh, man, whispered Jack. Now he could see it. See the whale's back, said Annie. Yep, the slope of the island looked like the back of a whale. See a spout, said Annie. Yep, the palm tree that held the treehouse looked like the spout of the whale. See his eye, said Annie. Yep, a big black rock looked like the eye of the whale. The gold doth lie beneath the whale's eye, whispered Jack. Wow! Chapter 7 Gales are blowing. So the treasure must be under that rock, said Annie. Right, said Jack. Now we just have to get back to the island. We'll show Captain Bones where the treasure is. Then while all the pirates are digging, we'll sneak up to the treehouse. I make a wish to go home, said Annie. Right, Jack poked his head out of the round window of the cabin. Captain Bones, sir, he shouted. The pirates took up the cry. Captain Bones, Captain Bones. Hey, came a horrible voice. Captain Bones stuck his ugly face through the window. His good eye glared at Jack. What do you want, lubbers? We're ready to tell the truth, sir, said Jack. Go ahead, growled Captain Bones. We know where Captain Kidd's treasure is. Where? We can't just tell you. We have to show you, said Annie. Captain Bones gave Annie and Jack a long, hard look. You'll need a rope, said Jack. And shovels, said Annie. Captain Bones growled. Then he roared at his men. Get some rope and shovels. Aye, aye, Captain. Then throw these lovers in a boat. We're going back to the island. Aye, aye, Captain. Back in the rowboat, Jack saw the sky had grown even darker with clouds. The waves were bigger. The wind was howling. Gales are blowing, said Pinky. You'll see a gale if I don't get me gold today by thunder, Captain Bones shouted. Row, dogs, row! The three pirates battled the waves until the rowboat reached the island. They all piled onto the shore. Captain Bones grabbed Jack and Annie. Okay, lubbers, he said. Now show us where the treasure is. There, said Annie. She pointed at the black rock near the tip of the island. Under that rock, said Jack. Captain Bones dragged Jack and Annie down the beach to the Black Rock. Get to work, Captain Bones said to Pinky and Stinky. What about you, said Annie. Me? Work? Captain Bones chuckled. Jack gulped. How could they get away from him? Don't you think you should help your friends, he said. Captain Bones gave Jack a horrible grin. Nay, I'm going to hold you two till there's treasure in me hands. Chapter 8 Dig, dogs, dig. Pinky and Stinky tied their rope around the big rock. The wind howled. The two pirates pulled and pulled and pulled. They need help, said Jack. Arr, let the dogs do the work, growled Captain Bones. You're not very nice to them, said Annie. Who cares, roared Captain Bones. Captain, we got it, shouted Pinky. They started pulling the rock across the sand. Now let's dig where the rock was, said Jack, all of us. But Captain Bones ignored his suggestion. Dig, your dogs, he shouted. Pinky and Stinky started to dig. The wind blew even harder. There was going to be a thunderstorm. Ow, I got sand in me eyes, Pinky whined. Oh, me back hurts, Stinky cried. Dig, shouted Captain Bones. He held Jack and Annie with one hand. With the other he pulled out the gold medallion. He tossed it at the two pirates. It fell into the hole. Dig for more of these, you swine, he said. Squawk! Look, Annie said. Polly was back. She was circling above them. Go back, she squawked. Stinky and Pinky looked up at the parrot. They scowled. Dig, shouted Captain Bones. A big storm is coming, Captain. Go back, said Polly. The bird's an omen, Captain, shouted Stinky. Dig your dogs, cried Captain Bones. Go back, squawked Polly. The bird's warning us, shouted Pinky. We've got to get to the ship before it's too late. The two pirates threw down their shovels. They started running toward the rowboat. Mutineers, come back, shouted Captain Bones. He dragged Jack and Annie down the beach as he ran after his men. Stop! But the pirates kept running. They got to the rowboat and pushed it into the sea. Wait, cried Captain Bones. Pinky and Stinky jumped into the boat. They started rowing. Wait! Captain Bones let go of Jack and Annie. He ran into the water. Wait, you dogs! He hauled himself into the rowboat. 
Then the three pirates disappeared into the spray of the waves. Go back, squawked Polly. She means us, said Annie. Just then the storm broke over the island. The wind howled, rain fell in buckets. Let's go, cried Annie. Wait, I have to get the medallion, shouted Jack. He ran to the hole dug by the pirates. He looked down in it. Even in the dreary light, the medallion was shining. Big fat raindrops were falling into the hole, washing away the sand. Jack saw a patch of wood. Then the rain cleared away more sand, and Jack saw the top of an old trunk. He stared. Was it Captain Kidd's treasure chest? Hurry, Jack, cried Annie. She was halfway up the treehouse ladder. I found it! I found it! cried Jack. I found the treasure chest. Forget the treasure chest, said Annie. We have to go now. The storm's getting worse. Jack kept staring at the chest. Was there gold inside? Silver? Precious gems? Come on! Now Annie was shouting from the treehouse window. But Jack couldn't tear himself away. He brushed the rest of the muddy sand off the chest. Jack, forget the treasure chest, cried Annie. Let's go! Go back, squawked Polly. Jack looked at the parrot. She was perched on the black rock. He stared into her wise eyes. He thought he knew her, knew her from somewhere else. Go back, Jack, she said. She sounded like a person. OK, it was definitely time to go. Jack took one last look at the treasure chest. He clutched the gold medallion. Then he took off, running toward the treehouse. His socks and rain boots were still there. He quickly pulled the boots on. He shoved the socks into his backpack. The rope ladder was dancing wildly in the wind. Jack grabbed it. The ladder swayed as Jack climbed. He was tossed this way and that, but he held on tight. At last he pulled himself into the treehouse. Let's go, he cried. Annie was already holding the Pennsylvania book. She pointed to the picture of Frog Creek. I wish we could go there, she shouted. The wind was already blowing hard, but now it blew even harder. The treehouse started to spin. It spun faster and faster. Then everything was still. Absolutely still. Chapter 9 The Mysterious M Drip, drip. Jack opened his eyes. Rain was dripping from the leaves of the tree. They were back in Frog Creek. The rain was softer, the wind was gentler, the air was sweeter. Oh, man, Jack sighed. That was close. He was still holding the gold medallion. Polly's gone, said Annie, sadly. I was hoping she might come back with us. No magic creature has ever come back with us, said Jack. He pulled off his backpack. It was damp with rain and salt water. Jack took out the pirate book. He put it on the stack of books, on top of the dinosaur book, and the night book, and the mummy book. Then Jack put the gold medallion beside the bookmark with the letter M. Next he went down on his knees, and he ran his finger over the shimmering M on the floor. We didn't find any M's on this trip, he said. Or the M person, said Annie. Squawk! Polly! Annie cried. The parrot swooshed into the treehouse. She perched on a stack of books. Polly looked straight at Jack. What, what, what are you doing here? he asked her. Slowly Polly raised her bright green wings. They grew bigger and bigger until they spread out like a huge green cape. Then, in a great swirl of colours, in a blur of feathers and light, in a flapping and stretching and screeching, a new being took shape. Polly was not a parrot any longer. In her place was an old woman, a beautiful old woman with long white hair and piercing eyes. She wore a green feathered cape. She perched on a stack of books, and she was very calm and very still. Neither Jack nor Annie could speak. They were too amazed. Hello, Jack. Hello, Annie, the old woman said. My name is Morgan Le Fay. Chapter 10 Treasure Again Annie found her voice first. The M person, she whispered. Yes, I'm the M person, said Morgan. Where, where are you from? asked Jack. Have you ever heard of King Arthur? said Morgan. Jack nodded. Well, I am King Arthur's sister, said Morgan. You're from Camelot, said Jack. I've read about Camelot. What did you read about me, Jack? said Morgan. You're, you're a witch. Morgan smiled. 
You can't believe everything you read, Jack. But are you a magician? said Annie. Most call me an enchantress, but I'm also a librarian, said Morgan. A librarian? said Annie. Yes, and I've come to the twentieth century, your time, to collect books. You are lucky to be born in a time with so many books. For the Camelot Library? asked Jack. Precisely, said Morgan. I travel in this treehouse to collect words from many different places around the world, and from many different time periods. Did you find books here? said Jack. Oh, yes, many wonderful books. I want to borrow them for our scribes to copy. Did you put all the bookmarks in them? said Jack. Yes, you see, I like the pictures in the books. Sometimes I want to visit the scenes in the pictures, so all the bookmarks mark the places I wish to go. How do you get there? asked Annie. I placed a spell on a treehouse, said Morgan, so when I point to a picture and make the wish, the treehouse takes me there. I think you dropped this in dinosaur time, said Jack. He handed the gold medallion to Morgan. Oh, thank you. I wondered where I'd lost it, she said. She put the medallion into a hidden pocket in her cape. So anybody can work the spell, asked Annie. Anyone who tries it. Oh dear, no, not just anybody, Morgan said. You two are the only ones beside me to do it. No one else has ever even seen my treehouse before. Is it invisible? asked Annie. Yes, said Morgan. I had no idea it would ever be discovered. But then you two came along. Somehow you hooked right into my magic. Uh, how? asked Jack. Well, for two reasons, I think, explained Morgan. First, Annie believes in magic, so she actually saw the treehouse, and her belief helped you to see it, Jack. Oh, man, said Jack. Then you picked up a book, Jack, and because you love books so much, you caused my magic spell to work. Wow, said Annie. You can't imagine my dismay when you started to take off for dinosaur times. I had to make a very quick decision, and I decided to come along. Oh, so you were the Pteranodon, said Annie. Morgan smiled. And the cat, and the knight, and Polly, said Annie. Yes, said Morgan softly. And you were all these things to help us, asked Jack. Yes, but I must go home now. The people in Camelot need my help. You're leaving, whispered Jack. I'm afraid I must, said Morgan. She picked up Jack's backpack and handed it to him. Jack and Annie picked up their raincoats. It had stopped raining. You won't forget us, will you? asked Annie as they put their raincoats on. Never, said Morgan. She smiled at both of them. You remind me too much of myself. You love the impossible, Annie, and you love knowledge, Jack. What better combination is there? Morgan Le Fay touched Annie's forehead gently, and then Jack's. She smiled. Goodbye, she said. Goodbye, said Annie and Jack. Annie left the treehouse first. Jack followed. They climbed down the rope ladder for the last time. They stood below the oak tree and looked up. Morgan was looking out the window. Her long white hair blew in the breeze. Suddenly the wind began to blow. The leaves began to shake. A loud whistling sound filled the air. Jack covered his ears and squeezed his eyes shut. Then everything was silent. Absolutely silent. The treehouse was gone. All gone. Absolutely gone. Annie and Jack stood a moment, staring up at the empty oak tree, listening to the silence. Annie sighed. Let's go, she said softly. Jack just nodded. He felt too sad to speak. As they started walking, he put his hands into his pockets. He felt something. Jack pulled out the gold medallion. Look, he said. How did? Annie smiled. Morgan must have put it there, she said. But how? Magic, said Annie. I think it means she'll be coming back. Jack smiled. He clutched the medallion as he and Annie took off through the wet, sunny woods. As they walked, the sun shined through the woods, and all the wet leaves sparkled. Everything, in fact, was shining. Leaves, branches, puddles, bushes, grass, vines, wildflowers, all glittered like jewels, or gleamed like gold. Annie had been right, thought Jack. Forget the treasure chest. They had treasure at home, a ton of it, everywhere. The End
Next time, we're going to be reading Night of the Ninjas, Magic Treehouse book number five. It says, will they learn the secrets of the ninja? Or will the evil samurai warriors get them first? Wait, samurai evil? Well, I guess maybe some of them were bad. We'll find out anyway. See you next time. Good night.